Okay, so in order to take a look at quantitative energy problems, we need to start by looking at the energy constants that we have. Now we're just going to start out by looking at water. And so we're going to have two sets of these constants. First, we've got heat effusion and heat vaporization. Heat effusion is looking at melting or freezing. And it's simple as capital H sub F. Heat vaporization looks at evaporation and condensation. Um, and that's going to be capital H sub D. Now both of these have to do with phase changes, and so this is going to be looking at phase energy. And we've got two different values for this. Heat fusion of water has 334 joules per gram, and what that means is for every one gram, 334 joules are needed to change from solid to liquid. Now really, this can go both directions. It's going to take the same amount of energy, it's just dependent on whether the sign of our energy in joules will be positive or negative. We could also say for heat of vaporization, for every one gram, 2,260 joules are needed to change water from a liquid to a gas. So significantly higher. We can take these and we can also write them not just as a forever statement, but we could write them as a ratio. So our ratio would be, oops, let's try that again, 334 joules for every one gram or 2,260 joules for every one gram. The other two values that we have as our constants are heat capacity. We've got heat capacity for solid water as 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius and the heat capacity for liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now these have to do with a change in temperature, so these are going to be looking at thermal energy. We can also think of these as for every statements or as ratios. So here it's a little bit different. For a heat capacity, we say for every 2.1 joules used. one gram of water in the solid state will increase or decrease its temperature by one degree Celsius. We could say for 4.18 joules of energy used one gram of liquid water let's say it will change by one degree Celsius. Again this time if we're going to increase by one degree in both of these cases we would use a positive value for our heat capacity and if it was going to decrease we'd wind up with a negative value. So if we write these as a ratio, we would have 2.1 joules over one gram times one degree Celsius, or 4.18 joules over one gram times one degree Celsius. And we can use these to solve some problems. 
So we're going to look at two examples of solving a problem with these constants. So first one, a cup of coffee, which is going to be 140 grams, cools from 75 degrees down to 20 degrees. And we want to know how much energy does it release to the surroundings. Before we do anything mathematically, we want to start by sketching a temperature versus time graph, to, which is a warming or a cooling curve, to help us decide what we're going to do. So we're going to say this is 75 degrees, this is 20 degrees, and we're going to decrease our temperature. Okay. Water at 75 and at 20 degrees Celsius is going to be a liquid. Okay. We don't have any change in phase, so that's going to tell us we're looking at thermal energy and we're going to want our heat capacity of liquid water. So to set this up, we're going to use that heat capacity of liquid water. 4.18 joules for every one gram, it increases by one degree Celsius. And now we can set this up to figure out how much energy we've got that are going to be released to the surroundings. Now, the release gives you the clue that the value for heat is going to be negative. Now we can plug in our 140 grams. Okay, now we've got two temperature values, but in our specific heat, we've only got one. Okay, and we've got just one degree Celsius. So really what we want to do is we want to find the change in temperature. Okay, so we're going to do that before we plug in. Okay, change in temperature is always going to be final minus initial. So here we're going to take 20 degrees Celsius minus 75 degrees Celsius, which is going to give us a change of negative 55 degrees Celsius. So that's going to get plugged in to our value here. Okay. Now it just becomes algebra to solve for our missing value for energy. So in order to do this, I'm going to multiply by both the 140 grams and the negative 55 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to have 4.18 joules over 1 gram times 1 degree Celsius times 140 grams times negative 55 degrees Celsius. Now my units I'll take care of before I even worry about the math. Gram divided by gram makes that cancel. Degree Celsius divided by degree Celsius gets rid of that. Okay. So now it just becomes multiplication. 4.18 times 140 times negative 55. Now we do wind up wanting a negative answer here, so it's going to work out. When I do this, I wind up getting negative 3, 2, 1, 8, 6 joules. And it looks like here we want to go with two significant figures, so we're going to make this negative 32,000 joules of energy release. Our second example will be our last one that we'll do together. In this one, suppose that during a volleyball practice you lost two pounds of water due to sledding. All of this water evaporated. How much energy did the water absorb from your body? And we want to express this answer in kilojoules. So I'm going to start out with my, whoops. temperature versus time. Now here we know that the water is going to be evaporating. So we know that the temperature is going to be 100 degrees Celsius. We don't know anything else about any other temperatures. So that means our temperature is going to stay constant at 100. And we have a change in phase from a gas whoops, into a gas from a liquid. 
liquid to gas. So this is going to be thermal or phase energy. And liquid to gas is vaporization. So you want to use the heat of vaporization. And for liquid water, that is 2260 joules for every one gram. Now, we want our answer in kilojoules in the end, so I'm going to go ahead and convert this into kilojoules before we even start. One kilojoule is 1,000 joules, which means I'm going to have 2.26 kilojoules for every one gram. Now the other conversion that we're going to need to take care of before we can actually find the energy in this problem is to convert two pounds into grams. Now you've been given the conversion from pounds into kilograms, so we're going to start with 2.0 pounds and I'm going to use a solved proportion. I'm going to put 2.2 pounds on the bottom for every 1.0 kilogram and then one more step to convert into grams. So one kilogram is 1,000 grams. Okay. 2 divided by 2.2 times 1,000 gives me, I'm going to take some extra sig figs, 909.09 .09 grams. Okay. So now that I've got that, and I've got my heat of fusion in kilojoules per gram, now all I need to do is solve. So x kilojoules for 909.09 .09 grams. Okay, cross multiply and solve for x. We're going to get 2.26 kilojoules over 1 gram times 909.09 .09 grams. Grams will cancel. And we'll be left with just kilojoules, which is going to be 2,055 kilojoules. And if we want to round that to two sig figs, 2,100 kilojoules. So two examples from number one and number two on worksheet three. Okay. Now try and solve the remaining problems on worksheet three, that's numbers three through seven, and when you're done, check your answers.